The Surface Laptop Studio proves that Microsoft learned from its mistakes with the Surface Book line. Well, most of them. Instead of over-engineering a way to have a detachable screen on a powerful tablet, the Surface Laptop Studio screen just tilts forward. You just have to press it down and it comes towards you over the keyboard. Press it down even further and it turns into a digital easel, similar to the big Surface Studio. That hinge screen isn't entirely unique. We've seen it on the leather HP Spectre Folio and some Acer laptops, but it's still, you know, cool enough to justify a spot in the Surface family. So why even have a new laptop at all? It turns out Microsoft just really ran into a wall with the Surface Book line. Uh, with the Book 3 that I reviewed last year, it was a really cool design, but it was clear that that CPU just really couldn't compete with other ultra-powerful laptops out there. And the reason for that is because the Surface Book was always a tablet. The PC guts were behind the screen, they docked into a base which had a battery or an additional GPU, but the PC had to fit behind that screen, and that really just constrains what you can do in terms of power and thermals. It was a cool design, and it was a really smart way to just make a detachable screen on such a powerful notebook, but it just didn't have much of a lifespan. So enter the Surface Laptop Studio, which is effectively the book's successor, and you know, at first it looks like a direct MacBook Pro competitor. And even before the screen starts moving around, it still looks a little unique. The bottom half basically looks like two tablets stacked together. There's a, you know, one in the center and one slightly on the outside. And that basically gives you, you know, a very thin edge to hold onto, but a little more vertical space in the center to actually fit in more powerful hardware. It's also 3.8 to four pounds, depending on the CPU that you're getting, which is about a half pound heavier than the 15 inch Surface Laptop 4. Um, it's clearly not trying to be an ultra portable, but it also feels like Microsoft is trying really hard not to make this feel like a very heavy gaming notebook. So four pounds basically just seems like the limit they set for themselves. The star of this notebook, like most Surface laptops, is really the screen. It's 14.4 inches across, and it's a bit sharper than 1440p. It has a 2400 by 1600 resolution. And notably, it's one of the first productivity PCs with a 120 hertz refresh rate. That's something Microsoft also brought to the Surface Pro 8, and that just is a really unique thing to see on a PC. Uh, typically that's technology reserved for gaming laptops because a high refresh rate means you can, you know, see things more quickly on your screen, you can get a headshot more quickly. For a productivity PC, it means that scrolling and, you know, jotting things down with the stylus just looks really smooth. And it's a nice effect and something I want to see on more laptops moving down the line. And of course, high refresh rates are a pretty big feature on the iPad Pro, so it does kind of make sense why Microsoft is going here too. In its standard laptop orientation, the Surface Laptop Studio screen just looks fantastic. It looks like it fits right alongside the rest of the Surface line. It also supports Dolby Vision, so you'll get HDR support for those really extreme brights and, you know, nuanced darks and video and some games. And, uh, you know, all together between that and the high refresh rate, it just makes for a really nice looking screen. Everything looks fantastic on it, especially video. But I also just enjoyed browsing the web, even after working on my review for this, which took me a long, long time, I felt less eye strain because that high refresh rate means that, you know, my eyes don't have to work as hard to catch up with text that's scrolling or things as I'm typing. It is a nice benefit that I don't think a lot of people think about too much when it comes to screens. Even though it's surrounded by some chunky bezels, which honestly is a thing we're seeing Microsoft finally get away from with the Pro 8, it's still a very entrancing display. And that's even before I started messing around with the hinge. It takes just two fingers to pull the Surface Laptop Studio screen forward, and it magnetically rests right below the keyboard, between the keyboard and the trackpad. It's a nice secure position, and that's a good spot for, you know, watching video in bed or just hanging out with the laptop, where you don't also want to touch the touch screen. Maybe you're eating something and you'd rather interact with the touchpad. It is a nice stable orientation just for watching videos. Another bonus for the Laptop Studio, it has some really surprising sound. It has two subwoofers that spit low end out the sides of the laptop and two tweeters that push sound out through the keyboard. So that's actually more hardware than we typically expect in a laptop. And the resulting sound just is, it sounds really realistic and it almost sounds like you have a decent pair of bookshelf speakers with you. They won't replace putting on headphones or, you know, plug into a better pair of speakers, but, you know, for what it is, for listening to a movie in bed or something, it actually sounds pretty good. There's also Dolby Atmos support for virtual eye surround sound, which works fine. I don't typically really enjoy that on a laptop, but hey, it's something. 
You can get into the easel mode by pulling the screen out even further and just laying it flat across the bottom, where at that point it's just sitting at an angle, which is really great for drawing or sketching notes. Um, if I was taking notes in college or something or in a class, I would really love this for actually taking hand-drawn notes. And Microsoft didn't really advertise this much, but you can also take the screen and flip it all the way over to the back so that it's basically facing an audience, which is really great if you're doing presentations or something. Uh, it's much easier than flipping around your computer. And that's also something other convertible laptop screens can typically do too. This is just, it's very simple. You just flip it over and it seems just fine. And when you flip it over that way, you also get a clear view of the hinge and everything that Microsoft set up for this computer. And it's definitely unique among the Surface line. There's kind of a fabric covering everything and the hinge itself is completely covered and shielded from the screen. It seems strong, it, it feels very sturdy to me and Microsoft says that you know they went through years of testing with this and all of their hinges. So it should last for the lifetime of the laptop. But, you know, just looking at this thing, I can imagine a kid or toddlers playing with this laptop, trying to pull the screen and just some sort of disaster happening. So it definitely seems more fragile overall than a typical laptop. You know, keep it away from kids, um, especially with anything that folds or has a hinge. It's a recipe for disaster. My big takeaway with the Surface Laptop Studio is that it's just so much nicer than the Surface Book, and it kind of fixes a lot of the problems I had with that machine. It's just so much more comfortable to maneuver the screen and you know bring it into different orientations. The Surface Book required you to hit an eject button, wait for the operating system to like release the screen, you have to pull it out, put it back in right in place. It was just kind of confusing and it didn't always work properly. And it also led to like some potential issues for Surface Book users. So this one avoids that entirely. It is a lot more seamless. And you know, the new design also leaves room for slightly more powerful hardware, but maybe not powerful enough. The Laptop Studio is powered by quad-core Intel 11th gen CPUs, either the i5-11300H or the i7-11370H. And they're both a big step up from the 10th gen hardware in the Book 3, but it's really curious to me that Microsoft didn't push for 6 or 8 core GPUs. It's just a really curious limitation when Dell can squeeze a 6 core CPU into the XPS 13, which is incredibly thin. We're seeing 8 core processors in gaming laptops and a lot of other productivity notebooks like the XPS 15. It seems like Microsoft has just kind of hamstrung itself by limiting itself to quad core chips like this. And when we asked Microsoft about this, they said that, you know, in their surveys and their research, a quad core chip uh, along with a dedicated GPU is typically what a pro user would want from the Surface line. I don't know about that. This one also has Nvidia's RTX 3050 Ti uh, at a lower wattage than most gaming laptops. So that's fine, it's decently usable, but I know a lot of creative professionals and media folks and all they want is power. You know, they'll take a slightly heavier laptop if it means being able to render video a couple minutes faster or something. So, so I don't really know if Microsoft's strategy with the Surface Laptop Studio really makes sense. Uh, if you're gonna make something for pro users, just go all the way. I think they'll be fine with the weight. And personally, it's just kind of hard for me to recommend a quad core system that's directed at pro users when there's just so much other power in competing systems, you know? At least Microsoft is using Intel's beefier H35 chips, which are meant for ultra portable gaming laptops. Our benchmark show the laptop studio is a big step forward from the Book 3, but it doesn't stand a chance at all against the Razer Blade 14, a similarly sized computer with an 8 core AMD CPU and up to Nvidia's RTX 3080 GPU. That's really just crazy when the Blade 14 tops out at $2,800, whereas the comparable laptop studio model is $2,700. The only downside for Razer is that it doesn't fit up to 32 gigabytes of RAM like the Surface does, but that sheer power for a laptop that expensive just seems crazy that you would have such a huge downside with the Surface. Now I'm thinking like Microsoft could be planning to have a 16 inch laptop studio eventually. The Surface Book came in 13.5 and 15 inch orientations and really 14 and 16 inch is where the entire industry is headed. If you look at the MacBook Pro 16 inch, I really like that thing when it came out a couple of years ago. I'm thinking Microsoft is maybe waiting and seeing what Apple does with the refresh for that machine before it rolls out another laptop studio with hopefully better hardware. You know, it's gonna be bigger, so it's gonna have room for better CPUs. Maybe we'll see an eight core there. Maybe we'll see better NVIDIA hardware there too. 
Ignoring how it competes just on a benchmark level, you know, the Surface Laptop Studio is fine for daily productivity tasks. It does everything I needed to do very quickly. It never really hung up on me or, you know, caused any stalls. I was also able to play Overwatch at the native resolution of the Laptop Studio uh, with ultra graphic settings between 90 and 100 FPS, which is pretty impressive. You know, this, it has a dedicated GPU, but it's not as powerful as the ones you typically find on gaming laptops. We saw something similar on the XPS 15 and Overwatch could barely get to like 70 FPS there. So clearly like Microsoft is doing some great work here when it comes to the graphics card and just getting more out of that system. I just really wish that CPU could compete with everybody else. I think the thing that's just really hanging me up is when I look at these benchmarks and I see like how the laptop studio compares to mm, the Surface Pro 8, which is a tablet in Geekbench 5 scores, it's only slightly faster and there should be a bigger gulf there. And I was similarly annoyed by just how limited the laptop studio is when it comes to ports. There are only two USB-C ports. Thankfully, they're Thunderbolt 4 capable, so you can plug in multiple 4K monitors, you can plug in an external GPU. There's a lot you can do with those ports, but uh, you know, Microsoft got rid of the SD card slot from the Book 3, which is really useful for videographers and photographers and everything, so that's a real shame. It's also really weird to me that Microsoft put an expandable SSD uh, as secondary storage on the Surface Pro 8. It's in a little slot right below uh, the system, whereas the Laptop Studio doesn't have that at all, and you can upgrade the SSD, but that involves opening up the computer, replacing the current one, and shoving a new one in there. So it is just a lot less flexible than the Pro 8, which just seems weird to me. So that's a few big strikes against the Laptop Studio, but I'm grateful Microsoft brought over one of the Book 3's best features, that fabulous keyboard. This thing is wide, it has some really great key travel, it's very responsive. It's basically one of the best keyboards I've ever felt in a laptop, so to have that back and you know, in a machine like this that's lighter and a little more you know, easy to use is a nice thing to have. I just couldn't stop typing on it. It's rare to find a keyboard in a laptop that's this good. Microsoft is also moving over to a precision haptic touchpad with the Laptop Studio, which means it has no moving parts. It just kind of gives you the sense of uh, clicking when you press down on it with haptic feedback. That's not new technology either. Apple has done that since 2015. We are finally beginning to see that in PCs. It's also gonna be on some Lenovo laptops as well. Um, again, not new, but a nice thing to have. Uh, less moving parts means things won't break as easily. And that's always been a big problem with touchpads. The new Surface Slim Pen 2 is also a really nice addition to you know, those great accessories. The only problem is that it's an extra $130, like most Surface accessories, unfortunately. The Slim Pen 2 is just really easy to hold. It has a nice weight to it. It kind of feels like a ballpoint pen. And it also has its own haptic feedback too. So that gives you the ability to, you know, actually feel like you're putting a pen or pencil to paper when you're writing on the screen. Um, it's a nice feeling and it really makes jotting down notes just feel very organic in a way that other Surface pens and styluses really haven't. It also sits right below the bottom lip of the Laptop Studio, which is nice to have. It wirelessly charges there and that magnetic connection is also strong enough where you know the pen didn't go flying when I threw it in a bag or I helped you know brought it around the house so it's a nice secure spot I just wish that pen came with the laptop the laptop studio also excelled when it came to battery life in 120 Hertz mode it lasted for 12 hours and 25 minutes in our battery benchmark when I knocked that down to 60 Hertz uh, it lasted for 17 hours and 15 minutes that's nice to see but really just keep 120 Hertz on your eyes will thank you so here's the thing, I really like the Surface Laptop Studio. It has a great keyboard, that screen is really gorgeous and nice to use, and uh, you know, it's just a nice step forward for the Surface line in general. But I can't help but want more, especially after seeing the book line struggle for so many years. With a starting price of $1,600, the Surface Laptop Studio directly competes with Dell's XPS 15, the MacBook Pro 16 inch, and the Razer Blade. But you'd have to shell out at least $2,100 to get the NVIDIA GPU, which puts it up against far more powerful gaming laptops. So here's the question, how much is a tilting screen worth to you? If it's more important than having the best CPU and GPU around, then the Surface Laptop Studio is perfect for you. But if you want more power for the same price, just get the Razer Blade 14 already. Stay tuned to Engadget.com for more of our laptop reviews. We've got reviews of the rest of the Surface line as well. And if you dug this video, be sure to like and subscribe.